All right, Dash is the coin I trade the most. That's the one I'm most interested in accumulating. I think most return viewers of my channel know that. And if you are new to my channel because you're finding this Dash uh, standalone videos during a, a live stream, somebody asked me to cover it. I don't cover it a lot, but on my Discord, I use Dash as my reference of my personal game plan on spot trading because I like my community to know what I'm thinking for future trades on smaller time frames. And then uh, mid slash short, short, but not micro time frames, my Dash spot trade. I simply use Dash as a reference because generally it moves with Bitcoin, generally does. Um, sometimes it actually, it oscillates. Sometimes it's slightly more bearish than Bitcoin, slightly more bullish, but um, anyway, it roughly moves with Bitcoin. So Dash short term, man, well, you got a lot going on there, shit. It's getting ready to really nosedive. It's above its weekly 10 and Bitcoin and Ethereum are not. Wow, Dash is stronger than Ethereum and Bitcoin right now. Holy damn. And that's why I'm sitting here waiting with Tether. Because on this rally up, I bought, I bought, at, actually at the line. I bought, so, because I had my orders here. I literally bought the low because of my chart. I literally bought exactly at the low. And if you don't believe me, I can maybe show you before we get off of here, if I can go that far back in price, because I traded a lot. Um, but I bought and sold here on that rally. Did I sell the top of that one? No. But did I rebuy here and sell there? Yes. Did I rebuy here and sell? I sold, I sold it like 40, no, I sold it, where did I sell? No, I didn't catch all this. I sold for an 8% move. I only got 8% out of it, so. But my third and and pro yeah, I sold about right there at about 37. So I've made three profitable trades in this area. One, two, three. Because I didn't think it was going to get above here or, or or above this triangle. So I didn't care to hold it. I thought this triangle was going to kind of stop it. But, but that's when it started outperforming everything. So there's no way to anticipate that with an altcoin. Um, unless... Actually, there was a way because of Litecoin. This follows Litecoin sometimes as well. Uh, Cause they're essentially, they are direct competitors. Man, there's a lot going on here. Okay, so what most people are gonna be looking at is this line here. What is this purple line? Oh no, did I have that marked off already? Okay, so not that line. So a lot of people are gonna be looking at this line, more retail and bots, because of this, of all this right here. It just floated up here, it's a beautiful line. My origin line is here. So this is actually more similar to Ethereum. Ethereum's got three interest points at an origin line down below. So honestly, Dash is more similar to Ethereum right now. That's kind of weird. Um, they're the only two that I like that, that I cover. Fuck, so you have this, this is actually kind of uh, complex here. Um, so you have this area here where you have three different items that are all three a big deal for price action. But the people who are looking at this purple line, right, the more obvious one, retail, they're pro they're definitely not aware of my origin line because I, I made origin lines and I gave them their name. So you're not going to have that line unless you watch my channel. So that's the vast majority of people aren't going to see that line, right? A lot of the people also won't know that this horizontal is important. So the people seeing this line are gonna become buyers. So this will be defended the first time. That can come in form of two things, all right? So, yeah, so I'm, I'm right now I'm focusing on the retail line and how they'll probably be wrong, but it'll it'll affect price because they're being wrong. It, it will throw a piece of the puzzle in there or like a, that's a bad analogy, it'll throw you know, it'll stop the washing machine and throw in another sock or something, right? Okay. It'll retest that line. So I think the first touch of this line, it's gonna come back up and touch that guy. 
and then the next time it's gonna be the yeah it'll be the second time so here's the very yeah so all that complex uh like just what i was saying was complex and before i knew what i was gonna say okay now i've got it figured out and a lot of people complain you should make the video any after you get it figured out no if you want to learn how to do this by yourself you're going to watch me battle through it so you know what my process of thinking is that's probably more valuable than me telling you what i'm thinking at the end seeing me get to my conclusion wow look how all these cross at the same area holy shit! what is that that's new year's day Woo. damn stash is saying something big is going to happen on around christmas new year's day but anyway that that doesn't happen very often all right, so what's gonna happen? This line here is the retail line. It's going to be defended, but then sellers will step in on this more mid macro line, right? So then this, it might go above here, but once it fails, it's going to find, um, so it's gonna depend on the timing. So let's go to a really small time frame. watch. So this is how Dash is gonna go down, like actually literally. Um, Cause it will go to start going down slightly, okay. So it's gonna hit retail line. It's going to might most likely ignore this horizontal and go straight back up because of the exuberance of the buyers still being hopeful that this is a higher low off to the moon dash to a thousand dollars, right? But then their, their buying power will slow down about here exactly when sellers will step in. So it's gonna get stuck here. And then the, so I don't know at that point if it'll come straight down, right? But regardless, here's the simplicity of it. The second time it goes below this line would likely be the short opportunity. And with that, it'll probably be a rejection after the second time. I think it'll come up and reject it unless the stock market tanks, which really the stock market took down crypto. Uh, I saw it like the, the algos were ready to pump uh, Bitcoin. Um, they were more ready to pump it than dump it. Uh, before the P... The PCE numbers or PMI numbers came out pretty bad and they weren't expected to come out bad and crypto just dropped, even though it was postured for good news and then it, and then it didn't go up. That, that's how my ape trade went bad because I was also expecting good news and everything was postured to be bullish. But the, so similar, similar thought process, you know, posturing and all that um, exactly when, you know, it's postured to, to be a lower high and, and the gas of the buyers are uh, the gas of the buyers are uh, is waning. That's exactly when the gas of the sellers will step in. It'll probably come below here, and that set that would be the second time. But I would still expect a rejection and then go. But it's still the second time, and that's your uh, that's dash for the short term. Um, and if you want to see, you know, people, folks, uh, where I see dash long term, if you're newer to my channel, uh, I have done this a couple times, but. There we go. Let's go like this. So yeah, here's that fractal I was talking about. I took this from the a chart with full price history since I already had these origin lines set up. All right, so next bull run, let's say November, 2025, right? Um, it's probably going to use what was previously the very bottom origin line. It'll use that as resistance, just like Bitcoin. Okay, Bitcoin for two whole market cycles, bear market of 2015, bear market of 2019 or 2018 and you know 2014. Yeah, 2014 and 2018 bear markets, Bitcoin used the same bottom line and so did Dash, right? Same bottom line. But Bitcoin's so far below it now that it will use it uh, as resistance coming up. And that resistance, like I said earlier in the stream, in 2025, it would be $1.2 million Bitcoin using something that was the bottom support as top resistance, 1.2 million because of the slope over time, rise over run. So Dash, you know, like let's say 2024, not even 2025. So I don't expect the bull run to be like really super hot in 2024. But for reference, you know, because I don't want to, here, let's actually just extend these lines. There we go. Five day chart to go out to 20, November 2025. Can't do it on a smaller time frame. There you go. That would be a that's a that's an extremely reasonable guess for Dash next bull run. 
very, very reasonable. And there is good argument against that. Well, this bull run, it didn't even break its all-time high. What the hell? Yeah, you're right. It didn't. That is a good argument, and I don't have a great argument against that. Um, outside the fact... Actually, I do. The last two bull markets, it's been... So the first... Uh, or the bull market of 2017, 2016, it was a bull market only because Ethereum. Ethereum became a shitcoin platform catapult. It allowed more people to enter the market more quickly to essentially become a penny stock, promises online, nobody has revenue. It's all, it's turning into NASDAQ 2.0 back in, you know, as it was in 1997. Pets.com not even having like actual revenue and, you know, being valuation of 20 billion, right? Just a website. That's what's happening in crypto 20 years later. Or actually 17 years, 17 years later, 20 years later. Yeah, 97 to 2007. Um, and so the last two bull runs has taken the limelight or the positive attention away from Bitcoin, from Litecoin, from, you know, even Ethereum, really, for uh, for some to some degree, um, and Dash, right? The OGs. Because, you know, it's not sexy to talk about that. We want to talk about new shit, right? So remember how awesome NEO was back in 2017? And if you're not new, if you're new to crypto, try to search YouTube for uh, for NEO crypto, but make it in the time frame uh, of, like, let's say, September to November 2017. You need to watch that stuff. Have you ever heard anybody talk about NEO since? Nope. Why? Because it wasn't new. So even from 2017 to the next bull run, NEO didn't break its all-time high either. Why? Because all the new stuff got the attention, right? Two bull runs in a row. What factually is different? It's not. I'm not saying it's going to be different next time, but there is something that is different. Will it cause it all to be different next time? I don't know. I'm not making that claim, but there's the argument. To the idea that, well, why would you say that if Dash had a lower high? Well, I've just explained why a lot of cryptos got lower highs. Too many market participants. And even if there were four times as much money in crypto this bull market than last bull market, there were six times the options. So the water pressure in that tube actually dropped, which means everybody's run was smaller. Like nothing went up a quarter million percent like it did in 2017. That was common in 2017. I mean, people becoming multi-multi-millionaires after buying $100 of Verge. I'm serious. That did not happen this bull run. Did not. Maybe Hex. Maybe. But then again, it won't happen again. Like, you won't have new Hex millionaires. Like, just like you don't have new, you know, Bitcoin billionaires. It's not going to happen again. Right? It's only that first or maybe second run. But there are too many... So, the the besides Hex... There weren't any millionaires made with $100. But in 2013 um, and uh, 2017, there were lots. Diminishing returns is essentially. But if you imagine water pressure in a hose, right? Water going through it. If you uh, have a hose about that big, right? And you don't change the pressure from inside the house or wherever, what's creating the pressure. And you just, you make the hose uh, shit bigger, the water pressure drops. It starts, it doesn't squirt out anymore. It just like trickles out, right? And that trickle is the difference between a quarter million, a coming a, a multimillionaire with a hundred dollars versus not. And the tube growing means more options in crypto, right? So even though more money came in, the hose's circumference got bigger than the amount of more water pressure pumping through so even though there was more water pressure from the source, right? Uh, the hose circumference got even bigger faster and the pressure still dropped. And so what, why that might not happen next time here. So here's the argument. And in support of Dash, why that's a reasonable estimate. SEC, they might clean shop this bear market. They're gonna hit crypto when crypto companies are weak no one's gonna fund them or fund them or protect them or come save them. They're not gonna be able to sell their coins to stupid retail people, you know, and do uh, uh, have exit liquidity. It's already a bear market. SEC can wipe the floor with them. not with Dash or Bitcoin, but 
It could take out, um, I mean, if it makes an example out of Ethereum, which it might, uh, all coins are going to get screwed. Non-monetary coins, right? So what does that do to the tube? For the ones that are left. If that happens, which ones will be left unscathed from the SEC? Monetary coins. Bitcoin, technically Bitcoin Cash also. Uh, if it had a fair, uh, I don't know if that had a fair, and I don't, I actually, I don't know about Bitcoin Cash. Um, it might though, but Dash, Litecoin, Bitcoin, monetary coins, untouchable from SEC. So let's say the SEC clear shop, everybody's scared to buy all those shitcoin penny stocks. Well, where's all the attention gonna go? Back to the OGs, monetary coin explosion. I did not think, so my original plan with Dash is, I thought that moment would only come after Bitcoin adoption when a country, a fairly large country like Argentina, my guess is actually Argentina or Turkey. My second guess is Turkey. But my first guess is Argentina, that the, all their people will not accept the government money anymore. Because the the baby boomers, even though they're not, they didn't go to the, whatever. But uh, that age group, 65, 70 year olds, but 60, yeah, 60 to 70, they have seen three times where all of their savings, all of their life, like savings, all their money gets worthless. They've been through it three times. Three times where the government fucks, them, like screws them up. Can you imagine that? Like all your 401k, you can't buy anything with it after working your whole life. That's happened to him three times, right? So I thought the whole play on monetary coins, my whole dash play, I thought it was going to be eight to 10 years. I just want to accumulate for a long time and then retire with it. Once we have the monetary uh, Bitcoin explosion, which will take up dash to like 10K, 20K, it'll be a while. But you could have a, uh, you could have a, uh, it could happen a little sooner. If the SEC uh, wipes the floor clean with all these securities, which the vast majority are securities, they had ICOs and the team kept most of the coins and they sold them to investors like, uh, man, uh, it could happen sooner. So it would be more, instead of uh, the wave of monetary coins coming from uh, Bitcoin adoption and through sheer demand, it'll be through attention. The pipe of the pipe gets smaller and it for and the only thing that's left in the you know the pipe is only consist of you know monetary coins or things that didn't get wiped from the sec but you have all the same money still waiting so the pressure didn't change it just the ho the hose got smaller so therefore now you're you know you're shooting water across the street and and you can you can power wash your neighbor's house from 100 feet away right um, so it could happen a little sooner and that's what we got that was a long dash one